Today, we're gonna cover five phenomenal SUV towable RVs, starting with the banger, which is the Zinger 18QB, which is a phenomenal, unique floor plan new to the industry. And I'll show you in just a second why I love this one so much. But let's start off on the kitchen. This is a pretty standard kitchen for an RV this size. You have a single basin sink, two burner cooktop, and that allows you to have the extra countertop space. Something I do like, however, is the fact that you'll see this electrical outlet is pre-wired for an inverter. So if you wanna have some boondocking capability, you can add that inverter and have that ability. You'll see storage across the top as well as a couple of drawers down below next to the fireplace. Now that fireplace will be your main source of heat in here, which means this one is not going to be equipped for colder weather camping late into the fall and certainly not during the winter. The rest of the kitchen will be right over here with some storage up top, microwave, and your 12 volt refrigerator. But the real crown jewel of the 18 QB is the back half. This is something that is very unique that I haven't seen in any other travel trailer in this class and size. And I like this for a couple reasons. One, it seems a lot more open in this floor plan, even though it's a smaller floor plan. And the other is the fact it just gives you a ton of sleeping capacity. Up to this point, if you have a larger family, if you have more than two kids, you can't really find a SUV towable RV for you until the 18 QB. This one, you can have four different beds back here. Now, granted, the ones in the back are a little bit shorter. You're looking at about 66 inches for this one, as well as the jackknife sofa. But on the other side here, we have a full 74 inches, so you can have someone who is six foot, 300 pound weight capacity on here as well. A couple other things I really like about this rear area. One is the fact you have a spot for TV. So if you do want a TV back here, the kids can have their own. You'll have another one up front in the master, which is great. And then uh, you will also see that you have electrical outlets as well as USB ports. So if the kids wanna be back here on a tablet, they can do that. Last thing I wanna touch on before we move into the bathroom is the fact this one has a roof mounted AC. So even though it won't do necessarily great in colder weather, it will definitely be nice and cool in here in warm weather. And then right outside the bathroom is the tankless water heater control. This one has an on-demand water heater. That means when you're in the shower, you have near limitless hot water. That's a huge plus. The bathroom itself is a little small. They had to make some sacrifices to have all that space in the back. When I sit on the toilet, you know, you can see that my shoulders are rubbing a little bit here. The cutout is too far back. So unless I'm sitting back like this, which is just an awkward position to be sitting, uh, it, it's just, it, it's a little tight. Same thing with the legs. However, I would much rather have it be tight and have the sink in here than remove the sink and have space because I've seen that in a lot of floor plans this size. So I'm glad they included it. As for the shower at six foot tall, I do hit the ceiling here. If I'm standing underneath the vent, I'm pretty good. But if you're any taller than that, you're gonna have to duck your head down. And as with pretty much every RV this size, you're gonna have an east to west bed. Otherwise it just takes up too much space in the floor plan. This one is a 60 by 74 inch queen. So we're gonna be about six inches short of a residential queen, but you will notice you have storage here up top, electrical outlets, and as I mentioned, you have hookups for a TV here if you wanna watch your own show. A couple big features on the outside of the 18 QB as well. One of them is the fact that you have a 12 volt distribution box right up front. This simplifies the wiring of the 12 volt system plus has a built-in battery disconnect. The other big feature for me is the fact that you have a very large pass-through storage compartment, especially on an RV this size. And then of course you will have some of your standards like a power awning with LED lights and everything else you would expect on a 2024 camper. Now, if you're like Ian, I like this one, but I kind of want something a little more traditional, something with some permanent seating, a dinette rather than eating in the back. Well, I got you covered. The first of our SUV towable travel trailers that are for a couple is a Silver Lake LE 16 RB LE. And this is again, a, a pretty similar floor plan to what we've seen in like the Bullet Crossfire. But what I really like about this one is they swapped places with the dinette and the kitchen so that I have a campsite dinette and I'm looking out to my campsite. I have a big window there and that is definitely a preferential setup for me. The kitchen itself, again, they give you good countertop space. You get those upgraded thermal form countertops, two burner cooktop, but it's very intentionally in this orientation. You can see that's how it is built uh, and I would prefer that over having the top mounted one any day of the week. 
you'll also see that you have a single basin sink with a, uh, a sink top cover. That's important because that gives you this additional prep space, which again, in a smaller RV like this, I think is huge. Window behind that too, to let in some light. Okay, storage in here, nothing spectacular. Uh, we have some down below, one up top, but what I do like is once again, this one has an actual furnace as well as a roof mounted AC, so you will get better climate control than some of the ones uh, previously in this video. Microwave up top there, and then you have the large GE 12 volt refrigerator uh, right over here to the side. I do like that they added storage underneath that for pots and pans. Then across the way, as I mentioned, is that dinette. You can see I currently have it uh, down in the bed position, because that way if you do have additional guests that wanna stay the night, they can, but as you can see, it's not necessarily the biggest ever, right? They're gonna have to curl up a little bit in order to make this happen, or it's great for kiddos, or if you have uh, like a, a dog, something like that, you wanna put a dog bed up here, this is an excellent space for it, so you can still get up and use the bathroom in the middle of the night and not trip on them. Great storage above the dinette, I do wanna mention that. And then uh, you will also see that you have your thermostat right here for your AC up on the, uh, up on the ceiling. And the bathroom in this one is a pretty good setup. Because it is a rear bath uh, model, it takes up this entire backspace, which gives you a pretty big bathroom. Uh, you have that thermoformed countertop again, good storage underneath, mirrored medicine cabinet there. You have the uh, tankless water heater, that on-demand water heater. And if I take a seat on the toilet, you can see uh, it is a little tight on the shoulders here, but manageable, but I do have plenty of room for the legs. However, the, what I do love about this is all the additional storage here you get in the bathroom. That is a huge plus. As for the shower, at six foot tall, you can see I can stand in here. And again, I can't say that with all models uh, in this kind of size in this floor plan as we saw earlier. So I'm pretty happy with the shower size. All right, I say this for last for a reason because this is a Murphy bed and people either love it or hate it. I personally like the uh, idea of a Murphy bed because it gives you that additional seating space. You have a sofa now here. So if you have friends over, you have more places to sit and you can obviously uh, drop it down into a bed and leave it there if you, know, you don't have anyone coming over, that is always an option. To drop it down into a bed, we remove that cushion. We're gonna pull these two pins right here, drop it down, and then we'll simply fold our mattress over like so, and that will be the mattress. You also see we have storage off to the side as well as the shelf up top. And one thing I do wanna mention about the Silver Lake is even though it's a little bit heavier than some of the others, you also have 81 inch ceiling height. If you're a taller person looking for an SUV towable RV, this is one that you should consider. That ceiling height is a huge deal and it feels nice and open. It's also an eight foot wide box like a standard trailer, so you get a little more width in this one than some of the other ones in the video. And on the outside of the Silver Lake 16 BHLE, we have a gorgeous front cap. I really like the smooth aluminum profile, and underneath that you'll see the battery disconnect so you don't have the drain on your battery. You also have pretty good space up front for storage and outside TV hookup if you wanna be able to watch a show out here. The other thing I really like is that you have a spot to be able to uh, hook up your dog so you don't have to worry about burying something in the ground. That just makes it nice and convenient. And of course, as we talked about inside, this one does come equipped with that tankless water heater. Now, I know that a Murphy bed can be pretty divisive. Either love it or you hate it. But what if there was a different bed that's still a convertible? Interested? Let's check it out. But that doesn't mean traditional can't still be modern. This is the Bullet Crossfire 1700 BH. And even though it is a very similar floor plan to some of the others that are out there, there's definitely some upgrades in here that make this one in my mind above some of those others. It just puts it a level up. One of them is going to be the interior itself. They call this the Ashland interior. And I really like the color scheme. You kind of have what they call a silvery gray cabinets. To me, I'm picking up some blue and green tones, but either way, I really do like it, especially with the champagne bronze poles. It's a little more modern, it's more fun, getting rid of like those deep dark browns that we've had for so long, or the opposite of the white where everything washes out. I think this is just clean. The other thing I really like is the size of the sink. Now, yes, you do sacrifice a little bit of prep space here, but you get a huge sink in this one, even though it's single basin, 
Love the size of the sink, two burner cooktop, and you can see they put it in the proper orientation, meaning that you know it, your burner's on the left and right instead of front to back, because that back burner can be a little bit of a pain to get to sometimes. So you sacrifice counter space in lieu of having a more functional kitchen. Speaking of functional kitchen, look at all the storage underneath. Huge amounts of storage in here, storage up top as well. The only miss for me in the kitchen is the fact I wish the microwave would have been a convection microwave oven, so we did have some kind of oven option, but I understand they are trying to hit a specific price point, so sometimes we have to do things like this to keep costs down. Lastly is the eight cubic foot 12 volt refrigerator in here, so more than enough space for our cold storage. Right across the way is that dinette that I had talked about. This gives you, in this layout, we have a permanent spot to sit and eat our meals at. This does drop down into a bed and you have storage underneath. Up top is additional storage, plus this one comes with an LED TV. I know that may not seem like a big deal, but the fact that you get it, you don't have to worry about where it goes, mounting it, anything else can be a little bit of a relief. And obviously it's already properly sized. You also see this one does have a roof mount AC, just like we had on the Zinger. This one also has a furnace. So this one is capable of camping you know, a little bit later into the fall. I wouldn't necessarily say it's prepped for winter, but it does allow you to do that late fall, early spring camping because you have a furnace rather than just the fireplace. Up front is the primary bed. And again, it'll be an east to west bed, a camper queen, meaning it is 60 inches wide by 74 inches long. So just like the Zinger, we're gonna be about six inches short of that residential queen. But you have great storage in here, storage all the way across the top, as well as wardrobe storage right here to the side. And if we lift the bed up, you will see there is more storage in this one than we had in the Zinger, much more usable. Uh, and we'll have some storage again underneath the dinettes. And we also, have storage underneath the bunks. However, unfortunately, the storage is only accessible from outside. When we go out there, I'll show you the storage space, but I really wish that they would have had some way to access it from in here too, just because I think that in a small camper like this, being able to access any storage is definitely a good thing. The other uh, kind of hang up I have, or is slightly negative, is that the bunks have a 150 pound weight capacity rating on the top bunk. So it's not going to be uh, equipped to handle a, a larger child or an adult, uh, but the bottom bunk should be pretty good. You'll also see that this one has your electrical outlet and USB ports. The outlet here is inverted in the bunk area, which it was not in the Zinger. So we do have a plus there. And then the bathroom. Let's give her a shot, give her a test here. So toilet space. Yeah, a little tight on the shoulders if you have your shoulder down. Now this I can do, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not forced to <laughs> sit back like this, like I was in the Zinger. I can put my arm up here, that's fine. This one is pretty good. Uh, I have a little more foot room as well. So there is space in here. Plus once again, there is a sink in this layout, which especially with this layout is pretty uncommon. So I do like that they were able to fit that in here. You again have an inverted electrical outlet, mirrored medicine cabinet, and the shower test. Let's take a look and see if I can stand up. That's unfortunate. It's kind of what I figured, again, very common with this floor plan. Uh, gonna have to duck my head just a little bit at six foot tall. Despite the great features inside, I think the outside is where the bullet crossfire really shines. You have a fully laminated fiberglass exterior on here, which looks great, it's durable, easy to clean pass-through storage with magnetic latch on there as well. And even though this pass-through isn't quite as big as what we had on the Zinger, if you recall when we were inside, we had that additional storage underneath the bunk on the off-camp side. You of course also get the power awning with LED lights, inverted outlet out here as well, fully walkable roof, and this one is prepped for a rear ladder. So again, a little bit more traditional layout, but that doesn't mean it can't have a ton of modern amenities. Now, what if you want something that's small, SUV towable, but you want to be able to take it off road? Let's see. And that off road machine is none other than the Outback OBX 17BH. This thing really does a lot and has a lot, especially start to look at the options to be able to get you outdoors, be able to go off grid. Starting off up front, you can see this one has a power tongue jack, which makes it nice and easy to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. This one also has the optional front bike rack. So if you're uh, into biking, you wanna be able to take some bikes out, has the capability of doing that. And this one has the optional lithium batteries. When you combine that with either the 220 watt solar panel or the double 220 watts for 440, 
that just creates a great system for being able to get off grid. And once again, this one is going to be fully laminated. You have a painted front cap. That cap is absolutely gorgeous. And then you can see the storage up front. Again, magnetic latch, slam latch baggage doors here, quality components, and you have that storage space. You'll notice that this one also has the inverter already uh, hooked up in here. Then making our way back, you have these solid steps with the tempered glass door. I love the looks of the door. Big grab handle on here too. This one has the optional knobby tires, again, for that off-road capability. Now when we start to look at the, uh, the axles on here, this one does have a torsion axle, but you can even upgrade that system. You can actually upgrade into independent suspension if you really want to start getting off-road. Then on the very back, this one uh, has the optional backup camera installed, and you can get a ladder for the fully walkable roof, plus this one has a hitch receiver in the back. Again, if you need for any other uh, components you want to bring with you, any kind of rack systems, including another bike rack. And as we step inside the Outback OBX 17BH, you can see it's nice and bright and open and airy. It has a very unique lighting in here, which I really like, something that uh, I've seen a few other manufacturers start to bring out in the 2024 model year. The bed is going to be right up front, and to no surprise, it is an east to west facing bed. But they did a really good job of utilizing the space underneath. You see the, act, the storage is easier to access in the OBX here, thanks to the drawers. And they give you the foot locker kind of at the, well, I guess the head of the bed, so maybe a, a head locker. That just sounds weird to say. But you have extra storage right there, plus a few um, wireless charging uh, ports, charging capabilities, little pop-up charging areas for your cell phones. The windows in here are pretty unique too. Um, we see this in, again, a lot of the lighter weight stuff, especially in the European side where they have almost like a, a not plexiglass, but like a polycarbonate type window, which is very resilient. Uh, but what they do for your shades is you have kind of two different sides. One side or the bottom, if you pull it up, will be your privacy or nightshade. If you pull it down, you have a screen because the windows will actually tilt open. Great for airflow and they're nice and lightweight, plus they have good insulation properties. Well, as far as windows go, because no windows have great insulation, but they do a pretty good job. You get a permanent dinette in this one as well, so if you liked having that, like in that bullet crossfire, you have it here in the OBX. That table does drop down into a small bed. You get the inverted outlets in here, but where I think this one really starts to make a difference inside is when we start to get into the kitchen. Now you'll see that you uh, get upgraded into thermal formed countertops in here. You also have an undermount stainless steel bowl because you can undermount when you have that thermal formed countertop. The faucet is upgraded is now a pull out faucet and you have a three burner cooktop instead of two burner with the oven underneath. There's still a good amount of storage in the kitchen both up top and down below and just like we saw in the bullet, this one has a furnace so you can camp in the colder climates. This Outback OBX also has a fully enclosed, insulated, and heated underbelly. And because lithium batteries don't like cold, you'll also see that this one has battery heat. Lastly, right around the side here kind of wraps up the kitchen. That is our microwave and underneath that, the Everchill 12 volt compressor driven refrigerator. Now over to the side, you have the stacked bunks. Again, very similar to what we saw in the, that bullet, but the big difference here is that they added a loading door. So you can actually take this bunk and fold it up, and now you have all this additional space that you can load from the outside, which makes it super convenient to be able to load and unload the camper with some of those bigger items like the giant totes, things like that. You also see this one has a roof mounted AC as you'd expect, plus an additional vent right here. And the bathroom is going to be, again, a little more unique. I say that because the sink that they use, you can see they did actually install a sink in here, but it's gonna be what they call an airplane sink. And I usually see these in like a class B van or in a truck camper, but they're great for space utilization. When you need it, you just bring the faucet down, you're able to wash your hands, do what you need to do. When you're done, you put it away. And what does that do for you? Well, look at all the space. I have plenty of space for my shoulders, great space for my legs here, and it's a porcelain bowl. So they upgraded the toilet in here as well. Storage up top, and you also get a, uh, an upgraded fan. 
so that if you need to, well, get some smells out of here or uh, be able to just dry out the shower, things like that, it's easy to do that. Now for the shower height test, this one does have a tub, which if you have dogs that you bring with you, that's great. It just makes it a little bit easier if you uh, wanna bathe them inside or if you have you know, the kids, if they're smaller kids still taking a bath, gives you the ability to do that. But look at this, that's six foot tall, they have a skylight in here, I can stand underneath it. Even without that skylight, I can actually stand up in here without having to duck down. So that's definitely going to be a big plus for the OBX. Now you may be saying to yourself, Ian, I love this, but I don't need bunks. Well, at this time, the OBX line only has models with bunks, but I have another line that has a model without. To take a look at the outside of the 16 FQ, you'll see this smooth aluminum front, which is a lot easier to clean, and it just looks nicer too. Coming back a little bit further is our front storage. You have a big door on there, so it's easier to fit some bigger items. Definitely a fan of that. And underneath, probably my favorite stabilizer jacks in the entire industry. These are the quick setup, and they truly are much quicker and easier to set up than pretty much any other stabilizer jack out there. You will see the more ride step above steps, able to climb into the RV that has aluminum treads, so that's not gonna rust. The foldable grab handle and that beautiful tempered glass door. Remember that has that window inside. It is prepped for a shade if you want that additional privacy at night. We talked about that big window, that dinette side, just like we had in the Silver Lake. Love that, you're looking out to your campsite. And underneath that is actually the mount for the TV. So if you plan on sitting out here and watching the show, you can bring the same TV from inside and drop it right out here. Then in the very back is what they call the Wolf Pup Kitchen, which essentially is an outside refrigerator, but that's what we want outside anyway. And then in the very, very back of this one, you have that extra drop-down cargo tray, plus up top, this one does have the backup camera option. Not to say that I was saving the best for last, but man, did I deliver. There it is. You have a north to south queen bed in a SUV towable RV. Uh, I know that this is something that's highly coveted and for good reason, it's easier to be able to get out of the bed if you have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. Looks better, uh, it's again, just a better overall setup, but it does take up more space. You will see that you have wardrobe on both sides, storage across the top, storage underneath the bed. It actually has access to the pass-through as well, so you have uh, some good storage there and you have a single inverted outlet, so if you have a CPAP machine and you don't have shore power, you can still run it from that outlet. This one also is going to be nice and cool in the summer thanks to the roof-mounted AC, and it even will let you camp in that early spring, late fall, because this one also has a furnace. Similarly to the East to West Silver Lake that we looked at, this one has a campsite dinette, which as you know, I'm a big fan of, however, the dinette here is definitely going to be smaller. It's not nearly as wide because again, that uh, Silver Lake had that eight foot wide box. So this one's a little bit narrower. The window, however, is much larger. So you do get a bigger window there. You'll also see right down uh, underneath, you know, in my opinion, this dinette's built for two, right? It, it'd be really tight to have four people here, especially with this right here, because uh, it just kind of gets in the way of anyone's feet that would be there. But for two people, this works. The kitchen in here is great as well. You have thermal formed countertops. You have the Greystone two burner cooktop, the, actually the same one that we had in that Silver Lake. The sink, however, is going to be different. Rather than a square undermounted sink, they went with the round undermounted sink. I am impartial. I think I like the square a little bit more, but what are your thoughts? Do you like square sinks? Do you like round sinks? Let me know in the comments, let's talk about it. You also see that you have a soap dispenser here, high rise faucet, and you do get some prep space over to the side. Big window as well. You have the range hood and up top is your microwave with storage to the side of that. Uh, you'll see storage underneath the sink, as I've mentioned that um, your furnace there. And then lastly is the refrigerator right here before you go in the bathroom. And just like all the rest, this one is going to be 12 volt compressor driven. Oh, my aching bones. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let's talk a little bit about the bathroom. So again, this is a rear bath. There is good space. 
toilet. It is a plastic bowl, uh, but you can see that there is plenty of leg room here, great shoulder space. And over here is where they change things up. Rather than having wardrobe storage, they give you a much larger vanity. Uh, huge sink in here. I don't know that the, I need one that big, but you do get good countertop space still. Mirrored, uh, big mirrored medicine cabinet up top, storage underneath. Your tankless water heater control will be on the wall here. And this one, I can't really call this a tub. It's more like just like a high threshold shower basin. So you have a high wall on there, which can be kind of nice. But alas, we have the, the, what I call the six foot problem. Uh, when you're in these SUV towable RVs, this is just one of them I cannot stand up in, which is kind of a bummer. Now, all five of these travel trailers are great options, but what you need to do is weigh the pros and cons of each to figure out which one is right for you. Speaking of weight, when you're towing with an SUV, it's extremely important to pay attention to the weights to ensure that your tow vehicle can tow the travel trailer you're looking at. If you need some help with that, we have a great video right here.